Um, there are issues which are not compatible, but it's not in the area that most people think. It is to do with the second law, but not to do with it exactly. This is where the problem comes when people try to um, simplistically say that the second law is against the idea of evolution. Uh, the second law as such is irrelevant. The reason being that it's to do with an isolated system. But the principle behind these thermodynamic systems is against the idea of evolution for the following reason. Even in an open system, that is in a system where you've got energy coming in from the outside, energy of itself does not build new machinery. That is the principle which is against the idea of evolutionary uh, thinking. Many people who are evolutionists try to argue that you know, over billions of years, there has been uh, a lot of useful energy somehow arising out of random energy coming into the system. By useful energy, I mean energy that is enable, enabling one to do work. For instance, if you have radiation from the sun coming in onto a solar cell, right? The solar cell provides you with electricity and the electricity can drive uh, a motor or could be used for all sorts of purposes to 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 heat up the water for your kettle to make some coffee or whatever. OK, so people have tried to suggest that random energy coming in from our nearest star, which is the sun in an open system is all you need in order to build the machinery of life. Now, that's laughable scientifically. It just does not happen. It never has happened and it never will happen. But you cannot actually say that it's one of the laws that we have at the moment of thermodynamics. It's not, it, it's closest, but it's still not exact to the second law. What we really need to say is that there is effectively a law of thermodynamics or a principle of thermodynamics that applies to open systems. So briefly put, this principle would be that random energy coming into an open system does not uh, give you more machinery than was there to begin with and what may be coming through the boundary. Obviously, if you, put a, if you put a solar cell through the boundary and place it there such that when the energy from the sun hits this solar cell, then clearly you're going to have a machine which is an, a, going to enable you to produce electricity. But without that solar cell coming across the boundary, and as well as random energy from the sun, you're not going to get anything useful arising of from this sun providing random energy into the system. So, again, the principle would be, but nobody's espoused this as a law of thermodynamics, but the principle that I'm suggesting, which never is disobeyed from what I can see in the laws in, in when I observe the real world, is that... Um, there will never be more machinery in a given open system than what was there to begin with and anything actually passing through the boundary. And the, the best example is a solar cell because when you look at plants, plants don't have a solar cell, but they do have photosynthesis, which is really nature's solar cell. Photosynthesis takes energy from the sun and converts it to sugars and it also or converts it to oxygen on the way, which helps creatures like ourselves, which are mammals, to breathe. And so it converts carbon dioxide with radiation from the sun to produce sugars for the plant. So it effectively is rather like a solar cell. Now, random energy could not produce the chlorophyll re reaction. You could have a billion universes and a billion years in each of the universes and it would never do it. The chlorophyll reaction is, has clearly been set up by 
a clever mind which has enabled the energy from the random energy coming from the sun to be converted to what we call useful energy, right? So it's that that I'm talking about. That very chlorophyll system uh, will not arise by accident. There is no evidence that these sorts of things ever arise by accident. It is to do with thermodynamics, but it's not specifically the second law. I even found in a discussion, a famous discussion I had on BBC Northern Ireland with William Crawley many years ago, where Professor Dawkins was on it. Even Professor Dawkins didn't grasp that. And I was most surprised. Um, he seemed to be thinking that random energy was sufficient to build uh, the cellular machinery that we have all in our bodies. And biologists know that every cell has to have what we call cellular respiration. And he was trying to suggest that random energy just coming into a, a random cell could produce the machinery of life. And that's thermodynamic nonsense. 